Hello everyone and welcome. On this video, I'm very happy to show you the brand new Cubase 3. Cubase 3 was rewritten from the ground up, carefully keeping all the things that you know and love about Cubase, but at the same time introducing the latest technology in keeping with today's and tomorrow's demands. Cubase 3 is a brand new app that now also works on the iPhone and it brings many user requested features, unrivaled usability, operation paired with the best performance and so much more. This is by far the best Cubase we've ever made. So let me show you what's new in Cubase 3. One of the biggest things that we have now in Cubase 3 is the universal app support for both the iPad and the iPhone. Now, wherever you are, whatever you do, whatever device you have with you, you can launch Cubase 3 and immediately start recording, start creating music. Now, talking of universal app support, let me show you the brand new Cubase for the iPhone. Now, you can basically have a fully equipped DAW on your iPhone for the first time. So it's fully featured. You have the audio recording, you have the MIDI recording. We can tap here and I can see immediately I have my key editor right there. I have my velocities. I have my audio editor like this. I can zoom in, zoom out, do all my fade-ins, my fade-outs, all my audio editing duties. Everything is right there exactly like we have on the iPad. Not only that, I can still go and use my insert effects. And of course, we have the same powerful effects like with the iPad version. I can go, for example, and load up the channel strip. And as you can see, we can see all of these same controls, exactly the same interface you feel right at home. Let's move on to the Studio EQ. Again, same familiar interface, really nice and fluid, very easy to get to the sound that you want. And let's not forget, you can still load all your favorite third-party plugins. For example, I can load this Waves EQ right here, as you can see, and I have total control over all the parameters right there on my iPhone screen. This is really, really powerful. And of course, I can load the mixer and start mixing my recordings straight away. So now you can have Cubase 3, a fully-fledged DAW, in your pocket. Pretty cool. The next feature that I'm sure you're going to find very welcome is the group tracks. Now, this has been a long-time reuser request, and it's now in Cubase 3. So, what is group tracks? Basically, imagine you have, like, your drum tracks. Like, in this project, I have my kick drum, my snare, my clap. Everything is right there. And let's say I want to put them into a group and add some processing, maybe I want to add some bus compression, some EQ, all these nice things. This is a feature that you find in most pro DAWs. So let me show you how easy it is. You go and add a channel, a new channel, and as you can see, we have audio, MIDI, but now we also have group channels. So I can just click on group, and that's the beauty of it. We get a dialogue, and now we can decide which tracks are going to be included in that group. So we can select our track inputs. In this case, I'm going to select the kick drum, the clap, and my snare, and also my drum loops right there. So now, this group channel contains all these channels that I set as inputs. So now if I solo it and play back, I get just my drums. Now let's say I want to go ahead and add a channel strip and I can add like a nice bus compressor right there, maybe a little bit of saturation. Or maybe I want to go ahead and add some EQ as well. And this gets, of course, applied to all my drums. So the same thing I can do with vocals, I can do with guitars, I can do with maybe my synths, maybe my bass, if I have layers of bass. Group channels, it's a very powerful feature and it's now included in Cubase 3. Now, of course, if at some point you change your mind and you want to change what's included in this group channel, you can go to routing and you go to track inputs, see? And now you can still change the track inputs and say, actually, I want this channel to be included in my group as well. Really, really powerful and really fast. Now, if you love mixing, you will love the next feature because it's all about the mixer. The mixer has many great improvements. So let me show you. First of all, we have a brand new look. It looks really sharp, really clean. It's very easy to see what you're doing. Now, the other thing you can do is you can make it full screen. See, all you need to do is drag 
And of course, you can resize it exactly how you want, but now you can also go all the way up and have it full screen. Now, why is this important? First of all, you get a very clean representation of what's going on in your mix. The other thing is that you have amazing resolution to your faders. See, I have a long throw fader now, so I can be very analytical with my fader rides, all these things. Now, the other thing is we have several zoom modes. For example, I can have a small, see? which is really narrow. It's great if you're working with many tracks. Next, we have the medium view, which basically gives you the best of both worlds. Enough track counts and enough detail on your channels. And then we have Excel that gives you big faders and basically you can see very clearly what's going on. See the scaling here, this is hugely important. It gives you a lot of analytical insight of what's going on in your mix. I really enjoy being able to see when I'm hitting minus six or minus 12. Also when I'm recording, you know, this is great when you're tracking because you can see very clearly if you're close to peaking or if you're at a safe level, minus 12, minus six, or if you're a little bit hot. So this is a great feature because it will allow you to create better mixes, easier and faster, and you will be able to tell at a glance what's going on in your production. Now, the other very cool thing is that now we have eight rearrangeable insert and send effects per channel. So for example, in this case, on this clap, I have five different inserts and I can just drag like this and rearrange them. And I can also have a send effect. For example, I have the Roomworks SC to add a little bit of ambience to this clap. And as you can see, I can add as much reverb as I want to my clap and I can have eight of those. So that's a lot of power when you're mixing on your iPad or your iPhone. And don't forget, you can always load third-party plugins in Cubase 3. For example, in this case, for my mastering chain, I'm using the Pro Q3 from FabFilter, again, fully resizable, as well as the Pro MB for some multiband compression. And of course, the Pro L2 for my limiting. So incredible amount of sonic possibilities in Cubase 3. Now, for those of you that have already purchased instruments or effects by Cubase 2 in-app purchases, we have very good news. You can basically transfer all your purchases at the top of a button after you installed Cubase 3. Thanks to the brand new Cubase 3 engine, MIDI editing has been dramatically improved, now supporting a MIDI resolution of 960 pulses per quarter note. This allows the finest level of detailed editing with Atmos precision. We also have 75 new effect presets in Cubase 3. These presets are great if you want to get to the sound that you want very, very quickly, or they can serve as a great starting point and you can start tweaking them to get to the sound that you have in mind. All you need to do is just tap and you can load instantly an effect. For example, I have a DI bass here, drum loops, presets for rhythm guitars, for synths, hi-hats, kicks, and every plugin has its own presets. So check them out, they're really, really cool. In Cubase 3, the undo history not only has been reinvented, but now we have an amazing history list. Let me show you on the iPhone in this case. So as you can see, I've done quite a few actions right here in this project, and I can hit undo, of course, to undo any action that I want, and it's lightning fast, it's super fast. But now, if I click and hold, you will see that now I have a list of undo actions and I can go back to a previous action that I've done and undo it super fast. I have a very complete overview of what's going on straight away. I don't even have to guess how many steps do I have to go back. I can go here and say, okay, I want to go back to this action where I change the parameter of that effect, or maybe I want to go back and make sure I undo this action where I deleted that MIDI note or when I moved that event. And as you can see, I can go way back. We also have brand new design for Microlog, Microsonic and Mini Sampler, as well as all the internal plugins. So let me show you. Here we have Mini Sampler, brand new interface, as well as the Microlog. Microlog also looks pretty, pretty sweet, resizable. I can see all the filters, my modulation, my ARPs right there. Here's Microsonic with a brand new closed lid piano. It's an incredible sound. And of course, the included plugins like the Roomworks SC reverb, which sounds incredible, chorus, and amp simulator, just to name a few. We also have many improvements when it comes to Media Bay. Now it's way easier to organize your projects, create new projects, create folders, copy them across, share them. It's very easy. So as you can see, I have quite a few things. It's now resizable, of course. I can have my folder here and I can see all my folders like that. And I can even drag and drop project files into folders. 
And then of course, if I want to, I can move the folders, I can delete, I can share projects like this by email or any other service that I like using, including Google Drive and Dropbox. And of course, you can save the files internally on your iPad using the Files app. We also have improved audio, MIDI, and automation editors. Cubase provides straightforward workflows when it comes to editing audio, MIDI, and automation data. In Cubase 3, Editing files becomes even faster and more efficient thanks to the newly added dedicated toolbars in the audio, MIDI, and automation editors. Cubase 3 comes with various predefined screen scale presets that change the size and arrangement of the user interface at the top of a button to make you immediately feel at home regardless of the iPhone and iPad model you're using. One of the very cool things that you can find in Cubase is the looper-like behavior when you're cycle recording. For example, you have an audio channel, you activate cycle recording, and whatever you record is layered on top of the previous take. So you can do vocal harmonies, guitar harmonies, or you can layer synths on top of each other very, very easily. Now, this behavior is still there in Cubase 3, but you can also choose a more conventional DAW-like behavior when you're recording. So if you want to punch in to create a perfect take, you can still do that. The way to do this is you go to your audio settings and then you can select playback audio tracks while recording. If you enable this, you will get the looper-like behavior. If you disable it, it will work like a normal DAW. So basically, whatever you record is going to override what you recorded previously when cycle recording. Another very convenient feature when you're arranging is the vertical event coloring. Now in Cubase, you can basically select events vertically and color them this way. Now, why is that useful? Because you might want to be able to navigate throughout your project and being able to see where's your verse, where's your chorus, where's your middle eight, all these things. And this vertical event coloring really allows you to do that. For example, I can have my intro here, maybe with a pink color, maybe the yellow is my verse, and then I have my chorus and all these things. Now, in order to do this, all you need to do is select the events vertically and then just pick a color. And that's it super fast. So there you go. These are just a few of the new features that you can find in the brand new Cubase 3. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you have a great time making music in Cubase. See you next time.